Greetings, friends. I'm Reverend Eric Muller, and it's, a, it's my blessing to welcome you to worship at St. Peter's United Church of Christ in Washington, Missouri, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. I, I want to say a, a word of thanks to all of you who, who sent us pictures um, from last weekend showing us how you chose to celebrate Easter. It was so good to see so many of you. And, um, and we continue our celebration uh, today and throughout this Easter season, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So just a couple of announcements before we begin. We continue to offer um, programming online via Zoom. So uh, at 11 a.m. on Sundays, we have a fellowship time together. On Tuesdays, from 2 to 4, we have coffee with the pastors. Um, and then on Wednesday mornings at 10, there's a prayer meeting with Pastor Gary. And then at 2 o'clock on Tuesdays, there's a sing-along with me uh, for children and families. So we hope you'll find ways to, to plug in if you haven't already. And we appreciate those that we've been seeing regularly in those gatherings. It's still good to be together however we can. So with that said, let us worship our God. Would you please rise in body or spirit for our call to worship. Today is the first day of the week, the day of resurrection and new life, the day that the Alleluia is reborn. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Beyond every mournful cry of despair, we sing Alleluia to the living God. Praise God, praise God, alleluia. Above the noise of human conflict and the disappointment of dreams that die, we sing a song of life that triumphs, alleluia, alleluia to the living God. Praise God, praise God. Let all the people praise God, alleluia. Please join me in our prayer of invocation. How good it is to be gathered today, O oh God. Our lives have become so scattered and isolated. We are broken in so many ways. We ache to be near our families and friends in these days. We long to be accompanied by you and by others on life's journey. And so we come together now in the spirit of the risen Christ we pray for Jesus to rise among us, to relieve our fears, and to empower us for his service in the world. Fill us with your new life, we pray. Come, risen one, come. Alleluia, alleluia. Our hymn is Yours is the Glory, Resurrected One. It's number 253 in the New Century Hymnal. Let us sing together.
young friends, gather around whatever device you're watching for this, your time during our worship service. And happy Easter to you all. You see, it still is Easter. We celebrated Jesus' resurrection last Sunday, which we call Easter Sunday, but it's really a whole season. And, uh, and I'm sure you have enough candy to get you through it. So today, we have a story about the disciples encountering the now living Christ. So on Friday, they, they witnessed the, the death of their friend and their leader. And now, on the third day, they're in a locked room together. And it's locked because they're afraid. They're afraid that what happened to Jesus might happen to them as well, that someone might hurt them or take their life. And so they're all locked together, just waiting and wondering what will happen next. They're all knotted up inside, you see. That's what fear and anxiety and worry does to us. It makes us all knotted up. And well, Jesus, in that time, in that locked room, appears to them. He comes among them. And the first thing he says to them is, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And then a week later, those same disciples are once again in this room, locked up, afraid, worried, anxious. And Jesus shows up again and says, peace be with you. Don't worry about anything is what he's saying. Well, right now, a lot of us, all of us, are kind of in locked rooms, right? And that can make us anxious, and worried. We miss our friends and we worry about them. We miss our teachers and we worry about them. And we miss coming to church. We miss going to our favorite restaurants or throwing rocks in the river. And we're all knotted up with worry and anxiety. But then, we remember that Jesus is still with us and that God's goodness is still all around us in the time that we get to spend with our family, time spent playing in the yard or taking walks, noticing all the beautiful flowers around us, time playing games or watching movies. Well, those are the moments that Jesus enters in and gives us peace. And our knots come undone. So lean into those moments and embrace them, enjoy them, and take care. Know that God loves you. Peace be with you. Our first scripture reading for today comes from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. 
And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The second reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. And if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. And so the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, His disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for a people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, let us pray. O living God, look upon your people gathered today. Reassure us with the good news of Christ's resurrection. Raise us up by the power of your spirit that we may not give up when life becomes exceedingly hard. Grant us such faith that we may hear you speaking peace to our troubled hearts now and in all the times yet to come. We pray in the name of the one who has triumphed over every tragedy, Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Well, they call this day Low Sunday because on this Sunday we are still recuperating from the exuberance of that other Sunday, Easter. It's hard to sustain the strains of Easter joy when the world's troubles flood in upon us. We get worn down and we get worn out. But the good news is that we do not uh, create Easter. It's not up to us to fabricate the joy. Resurrection is always a gift, a surprising gift bestowed upon us by the living God. Eternal life comes to us from the outside, that is, from God who loves us. It is always a gift, an amazing gift of God's love, this Easter joy. And so, on this low Sunday, the text comes to us from the letter of 1 Peter. It's part of an ancient baptismal sermon. It is a reminder that resurrection happens in the waters of baptism. The text begins with blessing, pure praise. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, exclamation point. There is reason to praise God, for it is by God's great mercy that he has given us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. When we rise from the baptismal waters, hope is born. 
When we rise from the tragedy of death, hope is born. This hope points us to the future where there is an inheritance given us by God, an inheritance that will never be lost. It is secure. There is a salvation, a healing coming, a saving grace coming that will be revealed fully in that blessed time when Jesus finally returns. There is a future for us, even though the present seems diminished and defined by sufferings and by many trials, there is a future for us. Make no mistake, this is not pie in the sky when you die theology. This is a living hope that transcends the troubles and empowers us to face them. I recently read an article about Magda Gobrin, Mama Maggie, as she is called in Egypt. Do you know her name? Magda Gobrin has been nominated for the 2020 Nobel Peace Prize for her work in the garbage slums of Cairo, Egypt. Gobrin had a successful career. She was a woman of means when in her 30s she spotted a child in the garbage in a dump in Cairo, Egypt. That vision of that little child changed the course of her life. She found her calling in those garbage slums of Cairo. Gobrin created Stephen's ministry, Stephen's children, excuse me, a ministry which serves all people, no matter what their ethnicity or religion in Egypt. Her passion has become to eliminate poverty and discrimination. Stephen's Children also provides literacy classes for girls and women to raise those who are easily overlooked to the fullness of life. Her ministry gives them a future. Mama Maggie has recruited some 2,000 professional volunteers to assist her in that work. Do you think there were no trials when it comes to serving people who live amid the garbage dumps, the slums of Egypt? Of course there are difficult days, days that would discourage most, the most courageous among us. But what keeps Mama Maggie and her ministry going is that living hope that is born through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Earth's troubles are not ignored, but they are transformed into triumph. In Christ we have an inheritance, the salvation and the glory that is yet to come. The risen one comes to those garbage slums of Cairo through the ministry of Mama Maggie. The transformation has begun and it is grounded in that living hope and it will be perfected and completed finally in God's good time. I think of the many medical professionals right here at Mercy, Washington, and in the nursing care facilities of this city. They are motivated by more than the prospect of a Friday paycheck. They are moved to serve by a living hope that their care and compassion will save lives and be a source of blessing for others. I think too of the Reverend Donna Papillo and those other nurses involved in community ministries through Deaconess Nurse Ministries I think specifically of Lisa Richardson, the nurse who comes here to our own harvest table to share her expertise in caring for any and all who come to eat and who need to see her for their medical needs. These nurses are moved by a living hope to make a difference in this day and every day. In the meantime, there is today. This is our day. This low Sunday may be a high and holy moment for us when our faith propels us to act in the garbage dumps where we live. We need not surrender to feeling low on low Sunday. We can rest and be renewed knowing the work of ministry is not all to us entirely. We have this service we do as Christian people as a gift. We are not stuck looking down at our toes in the present, but we are offered a glimpse of God's glory, a glimpse of heaven, 
And that vision empowers us to pray and to serve and to work hard together. It is a living hope that changes the world that is into the world as God wants it to be. These days of our plague, COVID-19, will end. This trial will be gone. We will grieve the loss of thousands and thousands of people, but we will also entrust them to the power and promise of Christ's resurrection. We will grieve the changes that have come upon us in our own society and even in our own church, but we will move through them and embrace them because we too have been born to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It's that hope that empowers us to persevere, not to give up and not to give in, and never to surrender to despair or fear or grief. So my Christian friends, come out from the locked places where we are huddled in fear, move out across the street to use our own privilege and our own status that accrues with our class, In humility and hope, let us cross the street to those others who need us. And in some cases, let us cross the globe itself to change the world with the love of God. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. In the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are born to hope. Alleluia. Amen. invite you to rise in body or spirit as we affirm our faith using the affirmation of faith that is found in the New Zealand prayer book. Let us say what we believe. You, O God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. Please be seated. We 
uh, now come to our moment of prayer. Where we lift up our joys and concerns to our God. A couple of, <clears throat> a couple of specific prayer requests this week. We pray for the family and friends of Millie Chisholm, who was Diane Gebhardt's mother, who passed away this last week. But we also pray with great celebration for the life of Fritz Daniel Forget, a grandson born to Steve and Pat Forget on April 13th. So we give thanks to God for the life of Millie and for this new life in Fritz. Let us be the prayer. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Living God, we give you thanks for this day and for this season and what it represents for us. It represents life held in you forever. That our lives are bound to yours forever. In this strange time, O oh God, these are words that we need to hear desperately. For they give us hope to keep moving forward. God, continue to fill us with that hope that animates us. It gives us the strength and the vision to be your hands and feet in the world. God, we pray for all of those who especially now are being your hands and feet in hospitals and nursing homes and medical centers. For those who are being your hands and feet by making phone calls to those who are especially isolated and vulnerable. God, continue to connect us in new ways. Continue to bring us life and hope, we pray. We pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, friends. As we begin uh, to receive our offerings, I first want to say thank you. Thank you for the ways that you continue to support the ministry of the church. Even though many things have changed, the mission of the church continues, uh, and we are grateful for those gifts that continue to flow in through the mail or online. Um, they help us to keep going in a very special way, and they are given uh, in praise to God and for the sake of not only our ministry here, but for our mission in the world. So let us prepare to give, and as you do, if you would take your offering, if you have it there at home, and hold it in your hand as we bless all the gifts that God has given us. Friends, we have been greatly blessed by God. By, by God's, God's great mercy, we, we have been born anew to, to a living hope. The, the resurrection of Jesus Christ fills our lives with exuberant joy. Let, Let us praise God. God as we share the abundance of our lives.
pray together our prayer of dedication. Thank you, holy God, for the gift of life. The good news of Jesus' resurrection stirs our hearts and fills us with hope. May these gifts we bring strengthen this community of faith for your work in the world. May these gifts bring comfort and courage to people who suffer various trials in this time. May these gifts lead others to the abundant life that you alone can give. Alleluia. Praise be to you, O God. Alleluia. Amen. Our closing hymn is Alleluia, Alleluia, Hearts to Heaven. It's number 243 in the New Century Hymnal. Let us sing together.
friends in Christ, go now into the world or stay at home and be God's people there. And as you go, take with you the blessing of the God who meets us this day and every day with Easter joy. In the name of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you.